Hey, Steve from SewingGold.com, and I promised someone I would make a video on tension on this Juki D1181N. Um, ignore the sounds in the background. Jose is setting up someone's machine. So, I messed around with the tension and a couple other things to make some decent stitches, and then little by little I made it worse, where it's pulling here, and then it just doesn't look that great. So I'm going to go through what I would do to fix. This is the bottom. This is the top. Top looks fine. Bottom, not so fine. Okay, so I'm going to go through different things what I'm going to do to fix this. So, first things first, I'm going to pull the bobbin thread up. And I'll sew a line. So, this is my line, doesn't look that great. We've got some stitches coming through to the bottom, so the bottom is pulling the top. Uh, the most simple fix I would tell you usually when I would see that, so when the top here looks fine, bottom is pulling, I would tighten the top. So I just tightened it, what, three times? Two or three times? I didn't even count. So, now we're gonna check it again. Top still looks good. Bottom looks a lot better, and that's all I did to it. This is going to be from not pulling the take up up, and I'll explain that in a second. Let me get a new piece of material. So let me sew again. So there's our top stitch and there's our bottom stitch. Okay, I want to make sure that my needle, number one, I was talking about uh, needle position with the customer. Uh, they were getting angular stitches. That could be partly tension, but angular stitches is usually either the needle type. A lot of needles are right twist, some are not. This one's not a right twist. And the needle that came with her machine should not be a right twist. It should just be a straight needle. So just put it in where you've got the one long groove on the outside here facing to the left. And then the little groove at the bottom of the needle facing to the right. Make sure it's perfectly centered. Okay? So that was my simple fix. And I actually messed around with this machine more so. So I'm going to back this up a little bit. So now you can see what I've done. All I've done is adjusted the top. And now both stitches look perfect, all right? And I've done more things to this machine to cause more problems, but it's reacting pretty good to what I did. So what I actually did, I actually loosened my check spring. So what I'm going to do is put this back to what I had it to, and then I'm going to tighten my check spring. Now, to tighten your check spring, you would put a small screwdriver in the end. You could put a long screwdriver, too, to tighten the check spring to make this stronger so it pulls the thread up a little harder. Um, we're going to turn clockwise okay i'm gonna turn it Ugh. i turned it like probably a little more than a quarter turn made this a little stronger so now i loosen the tension but i increase the check springs pr the pressure on the check spring let's see what happens Top stitch still looks good. Bottom stitch, no, nope, doesn't look good. So when I adjusted that tension. So I'm going to go back three more turns. One, two, three. And then let's see how that looks. All right, so there's our top stitch. Still looks really good. Bottom stitch now looks good again. So that check spring didn't really do that much when I made it uh, too weak or too loose. It didn't do a lot right now. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you what uh, increasing and de decreasing the bobbin case tension does. Okay, so give me one minute. I'm going to pause the video. Okay, so here's your bobbin case. Uh, okay, the tension on the bobbin case is the larger of the two screws. Okay, so righty-tighty, lefty-loosey, same thing. But this is going to be a lot more sensitive than... 
the tension on your machine okay and ignore this thing don't even use this this uh this is a pre-tensioner just keep it where i don't know if you could see mine from the video but i have the post flush with the uh, plastic thumb screw okay i don't really want to mess around with that thing this thing causes all kinds of problems all right so here we go we're going to tighten this i'm going to tighten this one half turn clockwise okay and now I'm going to put it back. And when I put my bobbin case back, I always hold the bottom. I don't hold this clip like I'm taking it out because I want to make sure I hear that audible click when I put it back in. So I'll put it in like this. Reach underneath, put it in, and then we'll pull our thread up. And now we're going to see what adjusting the bobbin case tension has done. So remember, I did a half turn clockwise so that means that I increased the tension on the bobbin case. So if it was me, what I'm thinking is I'm going to see some pull to the bottom. Okay. So now the top, top again, looks fine, right? Bottom, not, not bad. It really didn't do much to it, and that was a half turn. All right. Let me get some thinner vinyl. This is a little thinner also a little stickier feeling and I'm gonna try that and see what happens and I'm using a t70 thread on this I'm on strong bond t70 and I believe I've got a size 20 needle in here Stitch looks different, got different material, so we've got a very nice stitch on the top, and the bottom looks pretty good. All right, let me make some more adjustments to the bobbin case so I can try and simulate that problem of the thread popping through because the bobbin case tension is too tight. So what I'm going to do here, I'm going to tighten the bobbin case tension. Remember, bigger screw, not the small one. Now I'm going to tighten it another half turn. Okay. I can feel it's either too tight or it's wrapped on something. So something small like that would cause a big problem if it's not going to come out of there. Now I can feel this is really tight, so my assumption is I'm going to get a big problem, but maybe not. This machine seems to not have a lot of issues with tension. I don't know why because they're all the same. Let's see what happens. All right, here we go. Top, bottom. Pulling a little bit. Let's try it on that brown. See what happens. But pulling a little bit. I could see dots on here. I don't know if you guys can see it. Let's try this brown stuff and see what happens. Okay, so there's my top stitch and then my bottom. So it is peeking. I don't know if you could see that. It is peeking through. So, you know, we're just going to back it off. So that's what having too tight of a bobbin case tension will do. Also, if your top tension is too loose. So I am going to back this off. Okay, so I'm going to turn it half turn counterclockwise because it seemed like the first half turn didn't do anything. So we're going to go a half turn and we're going to see what that looks like. So I'm just going to go back and forth with this. Uh, you don't have to stick with the video. I'm going to be just talk until I think I'm going to drill this into everybody's head just, just so we can, uh, someone can troubleshoot their own machine. So I'll do orange again. Piece of brown. And we'll see what both look like. All right. 
first we'll look at the orange bottom top both look really good this one's my own I've got my stitch length on five FYI okay I've got the top there and the bottom there so it looks pretty good so doing that half turn was pretty good so let me show you what having the top tension looks like when it's too tight so and I've seen this where people have a lot of this uh, post showing I've seen people really crank on this and a lot of times the problem is their knee lift there's not enough play in their knee lift you want to make sure your knee lift listen to my knee lift can you hear that that's not even engaging the knee lift you don't see the foot moving up right so it just has a lot of play in it once I do this then it's gonna go up so I'm not there's just that noise is the play it's not moving the knee lift at all then I lift it up okay so we just want to make sure there's enough play in there otherwise people are gonna be tightening this tension forever um, and not get any tension at all all right so let's see what this does it should pull the thread to the top now okay So, doesn't do much on this one, so not much on that one. Let's see what it does on this. A little bit. Actually, a lot of bit. Sorry, a lot of bit. So this on this material, it's not nearly as bad, okay? So we could definitely see white here, right? We could see white popping through here. But on this one, for sure, we've got the, like a straight line, okay? So that means that top tension is way too tight, okay? Bottom looks fine now. Top, okay? So now I'm going to back this off again. I like seeing almost, like I was telling you, this one would be flush. This one you could just barely have a little of the post out, but it's going to de depend on the, the thread you're using too. T70, more than likely it's going to be like mine where it's the, just barely a little of the post is showing. Okay, so we're going to do it right there. <clears throat> now we're going to go back and see what it does again. <clears throat> this time I will try and remember which stitch I have sewn right in the middle. All right, right in the middle. So it's actually right next to it. Now you can see how much nicer this looks than that. So that was the top from before. This is the top now. And then going back to here. This is the really bad top, and then this is the top now. Now this top is not perfect, but it's close. I could still see a little bit of dots coming through. So what I'm gonna do here, I'm gonna reduce this another, uh, I'm gonna do a whole turn, okay? And let's go again. And this is just trial and error. It's not like I could tell you exactly where to set it every single time because it depends on your material too. All right, so there, that's the stitch now. Looks better. Stitch here. Now I don't see any dots and no dots, barely. I mean, I could almost a little tiny, tiny bit, okay? The other thing to mention would be, you know, if you're sewing with some really large needles, like a size 21 or 22, and you're seeing dots, it could be, you know, the, the, the needle holes are too big and the, the, the thread's going to pierce through or the thread's going to pucker through the, the, the uh, hole that it's made, if it's too big of a hole, if I could speak normally. Sorry. Um, and then, like I said, just so with this stuff, I, two layers of this, I would use a size 16 or 18, Okay four layers then maybe the needle that's in here you know then I, that would be fine so four layers of this stuff <clears throat> should be perfectly fine size 20 needle for four layers yeah that's a good choice and it should look really good because the thicker you sew the better that stitch is going to look you can't see on here because it's mixed in but yeah it looks really nice all right so I hope this was clear and I hope I wasn't rambling on too much. If you want to see something else, just put it down in the messages below um, and I'll try. I don't have a ton of time these days to make videos, but um, 
usually on the weekends. So we'll see what happens. Uh, if you need something, just put a message down below. I'll see what I could do. Can't make any promises. I am Steve from SolingGold.com. Thank you much. Have a great rest of your weekend.